It's Mad Men Sports, your Buffalo Bills AFC East champion for the first time since 1995. 1995. I was five years in the making. I wasn't even born yet. 34% of the roster was not even born yet. I may have been conceived on that day they clinched. Who knows? No, that's not true. You may have been conceived the day they lost in the playoffs. No, I'm a Valentine's Day baby. February to November. It's a tough. They decided to start trying after the Bills. Lost. <laughs> it's it's a tough thing to deal with knowing that you're anyone born in November, specifically the beginning of November, just know Valentine's Day, baby. But anyways, <laughs> anyone in the beginning of September is uh, New Year's, baby. Yeah, go Bills. That was crazy. Eleven and three, AFC East champions, and I just had a feeling all day. That they were just going to walk into that game and just be like, listen, we're not playing around today. We're just going to run you did, over. Did you feel nervous at all? Even when it was first and 30 <laughs> and the go- first, I mean, first and 30 and the goal, like go to goal. I did not feel anything at all. I was like, all right, whatever. We'll take another 10 yard penalty. Whatever. Dude, it was crazy. The past couple weeks specifically, I've been very com- confident and comfortable watching these games, and that is something that I've never felt before. It's how you know they're a good team, because I just trusted them. I mean, we saw that, what was that, Buffalo Fanatics? The Bills that, guys. Had that tweet, oh, what a disappointing first half. Like, Pull listen, up. dude, they're up a, a touchdown, right? Yeah. It was 21-14, and they were down a possession. They were minus one possession at that point. Because they've got gotten the ball back. I know. I tweeted at him. I was like, they scored 21 points in the first half. What more do you want? Exactly. Like 21 uh, points in a quarter? And listen, you know, I mean. <laughs> they said offense isn't everything. And then I said, well, team who scores the most points. Listen, 48, 48 or 49, 48 points was everything at the end of the game. Listen, after yeah. the, I mean, what do you, what do you, what is there to complain about about that first half? Okay, maybe you wish the Milano had a little better coverage on Fafan, but the other team gets paid too, so I'm not sure what you're really looking for there. And then on the other side of it, I mean, you were minus a possession. You were scoring on every possession that you had. Yeah, that the last ball. possession. That was crazy. That this, Devin Singletary, Singletary nail, yard nail in the coffin is something that you don't see from Bill's past. No, they that's play. usually it's like the forte of the Patriots right there. Like, oh, we're yeah. gonna stop passing, but now you know we're just gonna gas. Tony Michelle's gonna run for fifty-one yards for a touchdown just to make it look even worse. That was a yeah. great game, great game, great night, great night. We pop champagne. Yeah, I popped some champagne last night. Not hungover. Put it in. Yeah, I'll put it in the video. People on YouTube want to see that. You're gonna put it in the video? Yeah, dude. I'm feeling a little wild. I got a lot of time today. You do. You do. Do a little something special for guys at home. No. I hope you guys enjoyed that segment we just put in right there. It was fun. Yeah. It was fun. Well, we're probably still going to be talking. I don't know. I haven't figured that out yet. <laughs> da, 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 da. <laughs> but, guys, even the defense has been playing great the last couple of weeks. I mean, we've been like, oh, my God, if teams start to run, we're screwed. Right? That's how it's been, like, for the last three years with McDermott's defense. It's like, teams would come in here. Remember the Saints game? Where Kamara and Ingram just ran all over They dropped us. 50 on us. Yeah, that was a bad game. I mean, think about last year's Eagles game. I mean, Sanders ran all over us then, too. I mean, I, I, the list goes on and on. Whenever there was a Bills blowout, you can always kind of point at the running backs. Like, mm-hmm. you know, the Bills kind of couldn't stop the run. Even for years, the Patriots. Yeah. When we saw Tom Brady starting to decline, they just gashed us they decided to run with the, the run. It was that simple for them. But, you know, the last four or five weeks... They've been stuffing the run like crazy. I mean, last night is no anomaly. That is that is what they've been doing for the last month or so now. And Melvin Gordon, he he's a pro, he's a pro. He's a, he's a pro's pro right there. Philip Lindsay's a one of the best young running backs. I don't know how much longer he can carry the young thing there, yeah. but he's a third-year running back who's got some great potential to burst out. And I mean, in garbage time, that's what they went with. Like that was the Denver's crutch was all right, garbage time we got to score a little bit of points. They started running. They started running like midway through the third. Yeah, the the game was over at halftime in my eyes. I mean, yeah, I looked around you guys at the fire and I said, "Well, this this is over, right?" And yeah. Like, yeah, it was over. And at halftime, what they maybe threw 
a pass or two to a wide receiver. That was the craziest stat. Twenty nine seconds left in the first half was when the first wide receiver caught a pass. It I was, think they ended up catching three passes for like 35 yards. I think it was five for 37, or something along that. That's even worse. Uh, yeah. Two more catches. Exactly, right? Like, it was That's such really a ridiculous bad. situation. The Bills played great. How about Trey White? Trey we, White. We heard all week from Drew Locke. Oh, you know, I played him in college. I'm not going to be scared of him. Uh, I'm not trying to wait him. Because he rocked your shit. Dude. A, you didn't even throw a first. You didn't even throw a pass in the first half towards him. B, he sack stripped you to the point where Jerry Hughes is looking like a little Sean McCoy running it back with a loaf of bread, scoring a touchdown on your noggin. Like, what are you talking about? You're not scared of him. You should be scared of him. You should be scared of the whole, the Bills. whole team. The whole, listen, you know, I'm in like four Bills game day group chats, family, friends, flex. Yeah, I mean, it's not some the players. <laughs> It's not sometimes. Me and Lee Smith text back and forth. Oh, that's the dream, isn't it? Yeah. That is the dream. Lee Smith, come on the pod if you're watching. Secretly. If you know, you know. Yeah. Come on the pod. Yeah. Well, I have a voice changer. We could change your voice. Hi, or I'm Lee Smith. Hi, I'm Lee Smith. What is he, Mickey Mouse? Yes. <laughs> I have a Mickey Mouse voice changer. <laughs> Damn, Disney's got you cooked. <laughs> Uh, but no, I mean, in, in the group chat, they were like, oh, you know, the only team I'm really scared of is the Ravens. And I kept thinking to myself, I'm not scared of anything with the this. Ravens haven't been what they were the last two years. No, and they barely got by the Browns besides like, you know, the Browns came back. I don't think the, I'm not scared of anyone. Listen, are the playoffs going to be easy? No. But am I saying, can the Buffalo Bills beat anyone in the playoffs? Yeah, they could. They could also lose to anyone in the playoffs because that's what the playoffs are about. Yeah. It's just a crapshoot, whoever makes it to the Super Bowl. Ex- exactly, exactly. I mean, sitting here and complaining like, oh, I hope they get seeding here, seeding there. Get the second seed. Dude, you're in. It's weird that we're like, the Bill- at least I'm starting to get complacent. Like, oh, yeah, the Bills are in this playoffs. I mean, mathematically, the first seed isn't out, but the first seed's probably out. Yeah. But how you would go about it is the Steelers play the Colts and the Browns the rest of the way. They also have three games. There's one more game left. Colts and the Browns. Those are the two big ones. Might be the Bengals thrown in there somewhere. Yeah, I think it's the Which Bengals. Which not crossing my fingers. Or yeah, no. but what, I think they're on the third or fourth quarterback. But you're going to get the second seed because you're going to probably win your next two games just because the second seed is going to be in play. And the Steelers, there's no like, ah, should we start them or sit them? You're playing the Colts and the Browns. Those two two, two teams are wild card teams mm-hmm. that are probably better than the Steelers right now. The Steelers are injured slash down and kind of figured out. You know what I yeah, mean? Yeah, I think the case of the Steelers is kind of like the end of the Wizard of Oz when that curtain is revealed back and it's that little guy. Yeah, I think that's what the kind of the story of the Steelers is. They yeah, they're just a little a guy in a helmet. <laughs> they want to. They went on a big run. Against some subpar teams, and when they faced real competition at the end of the year, ugh, didn't go too well. Exactly. So, you know, you got to think the second seed's in play. The second seed, if you win twice in the playoffs, keeps Kansas City as far away as possible, which the fans deserve. If they get, if it gets to that point, the fans deserve an AFC championship game with the Bills and the Chiefs again. You know? And I think with a healthy Josh Allen, because if you remember... That non-throwing shoulder was injured when we played the Chiefs. I mean, Matt Milano was out when we played the Chiefs. They were in a short week when they played the Chiefs. I mean, wild schedule adjustments when they played the Chiefs. Yeah. The Bills are ripe to take a Chiefs game back. I, I'm not really afraid of the Chiefs. I mean, you look at what the defense did against Patrick Mahomes. There was no high-flying offense. There was yeah, no Tyreek Hill doing they, backflips. They ran for 180-plus yards, I'm pretty sure, like as a team, I think. Clyde Edwards, Alaire had one sixty one and two touchdowns, but I don't think that's happening again. This rushing defense has figured it out. Yeah, I I, I think you listen, Kelsey and Hill are they're fantastic, but you know my safeties and my corners are better than your wide receivers any day of the week. Levi Wallace, Levi Wallace is good. I've always I've never never shied away from the Levi Wallace thing. Dave wants to always kill him. I, I listen, man. I think he's a great player. I think he always looks a little bit worse than. You know what he actually is because Trey White's on the other side. You got to give him credit. He's holding that spot down for a walk on at Alabama and an undrafted rookie. Exactly. The guy has been through the muck to get to where he is in life. 
give him some praise for crying. I know. Out. Come on. Throw the Tragic. guy a bone, right? <laughs> He's a good dude. Yeah. That's tough. Listen, AFC East champions, 25 years ago. What were you doing 25 years ago? Swimming around? Yeah. Took a long swim. <laughs> yeah. Uh, 25 years ago, I was probably three three or something like that, three months old. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, September to December. Yeah. So I was alive. Probably wasn't that fun. Damn, the second coming of Jake. That's that's what got us. Shit my pants and stuff back then. <laughs> think about it. Josh Allen wasn't even fall, born then. That's the crazy part. I know. He was born in 96. I think like May or something like that. May or June. It's nuts. Yeah. Like May if you would have told people in 95, like, hey, enjoy this because 25 years from now, you're not coming back. I saw a meme. It was uh, Jim Kelly talking to Lee. Marv Levy. Marv Levy. Jesus. It's actually in the morning. We don't do that often. Uh, they were talking to Marv Levy, and then Marv Levy was like, hey, Jim, I found your replacement, but he's in a maternity ward uh, in Fresno. I just kind of found that funny. I guess some of the old Zach. It's really tough when you tell a joke on the podcast, and Zach's on his phone, and I don't get any sort of reaction. Dude, that so joke just, landed. Don't worry. That, I'm just telling a joke to I myself. Didn't, I didn't want to react because they were laughing. Yeah, that's right. how good it was. That, that's tough. See, it's kind of weird talking to That's kind of what I was talking about. <laughs> that was what I said earlier. When What if you told someone 25 years ago? It's nuts. It's yeah. nuts. We popped champagne last night. We had some drinks. Those announcers suck. The announcers were brutal. Oh, my gosh. They it's were, like they never watched a Bills game before. <laughs> makes sense. But it's going to be wild because the year's... Coming up, I'm thinking we're making a run, but we're gonna start getting those quote unquote big time announcers, which end up sucking anyways. But they're almost worse because, but they're doing they just talk out of their ass. They're doing ten Chiefs games a year, so yeah, I don't know. Listen, there's there's a lot to be excited about. Let's win our next two. Let's thirteen and let's three. Do thirteen to three. Why not? Because. You know, we're 11 and 3 right now. I mean, this, why not? This is their biggest, largest win total since maybe 99. I don't remember. 91, I thought. Last time. Well, the last time they were like 10 and. No, because the early 90s, they were winning multiple double digit weeks. Hmm. I don't I know. I think it's the largest win total. I think they were 11 and 5 and 99 when they made the wild card. Hmm. Josh Allen. Second player to throw for 4,000 yards in a season. Who's the first? Is Drew, Drew Bledsoe. Yeah. I always like Drew. Uh, passed. Stephon Diggs passed Eric Mould's uh, record for catches in a season. Stephon Diggs. Big game. 141 yards. 11 yeah, catches. You can't hold that dude down. He's good. It's in, it's impossible. It's that dude. 111 catches. 13. 111. Yeah. 111 know. catches on the season. I don't know why I was thinking 13 either. Yeah, because he definitely w- didn't he have 102. Targets. Yeah. That's crazy. That's not something. Like, 111 catches. If you would have told me on May 17th, and we're up here podcasting while the whole world's falling apart, or March 17th, while the whole world's falling apart, we're up here podcasting, and we're saying, we got Stefan Diggs, but also, <laughs> he's going to have 111 catches, and you're not going to be able to go to playoff games, but we're going to win the division. I'd be like, jeez. Okay. <laughs> I thought we'd be like, uh, we used to, I didn't even know if we were going to make the playoffs just because the question around like the season. There was a, in March, there was a lot of questions on what was going to go on. I mean, maybe not in March. That was kind of the beginning of things, but moving into like April and May, we're like, oh, what's going I feel on? like this is just what the Bills are supposed to do. I, I like, I hate to be like the cocky fan that hasn't seen a division championship in 25 years. But accepts it like I think they were supposed to do this. Like this is exactly the bare minimum. I thought this team. They didn't fall into this either. They earned it. Yeah, I I think this was the bare minimum this team could have done this year. I see some huge things for this team, and I think last night kind of just helped guide me along that thought process of we're we're destined for more than just one playoff game. We 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 cannot lose. We cannot be a one and done. No, and. I, I just feel like this team isn't a one and done. There's so much better than last year. There's just so much everything. Like I don't want Dable to leave. That's my biggest fear going into like what's next over the next three months. Pay him whatever he wants. 
Yeah, I can't I can't imagine Pagula's not going to be like, oh, like I'll, I'll cut you a check if you want to stay. And is there salary caps for coaches? There isn't. However, like you know, at some point, a coach is going to want to be a head coach. Unless you have a billion dollars. But like you said last night, there's guys like Josh McDaniels who have a shot to be a head coach, and they're like, nope, I'm gonna just go back to New England. Yeah, I don't think it's the same setup because I think McDaniels is leaving, waiting for Belichick to leave. Mm-hmm. But. I don't know if that's a smart idea. That wasn't the right sauce there. There's no. there's going to be a lot of head coaching vacancies. Dable's going to be up in those guts of trying to get into a spot. So hopefully he stays. Hope you know. No, hope hope the guy interviews poorly. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he was really good until we interviewed him. Yeah. And then we're like, no, you cannot be a head coach. He just wouldn't stop talking about Josh Allen in shorts. I don't understand it. <laughs> his big hands. Look at my hands. No, this is Josh Allen's hands. One of his contractual obligations was to make sure we trade a first round pick for Isaiah McKenzie. I don't understand that. <laughs> I mean, he's good, but I don't understand why he wants it. <laughs> We're just going to have to cut it off. And then, boom, dynasty. The Bills. Dynasty. Could you imagine <laughs> if that is what's stopping Brian Dable? Is. Giving the fucking bank for Isaiah McKenzie. <laughs> Think about it. He loves that dude, and he should because <sighs> he played well last the night. The biggest thing that irked me last night was that they took three touchdowns off the board due yeah. to penalties. And how about the how many times the Bills scored? I mean, yeah, the, come on. We were unstoppable, and we'll count those that whole fiasco because one of them happened on another drive. Could you imagine fourteen more points added on to forty-eight points? Well, eight more points, but yeah. Eight. Yeah. 14 oh. minus six because they got field goals. Oh, that's right. Let me let me live. Dude, live up. But eight more points. That's well, no, they got stopped on the goal line once. That was the time before. Oh, was it? Yeah. Imagine if we scored there. <laughs> <laughs> All of the points happened for this Andre team. Roberts didn't muff that punt. Right. We right. could be looking at a 70-point game. They were close. I mean, listen, you're really talking about... Once you get up to 50, 70 is not that far off. I I thought they were destined for 50 when it was at 35. Yeah. I mean, it was only two touchdowns away. Wow, we're going to drop 50 on these guys. They didn't... The problem was they didn't score on this, the drive where, in the third quarter where Josh Allen chucked the ball down to Diggs. Yeah. They didn't score on that drive. That was a nice ball. It was a great ball. Great that was catch. like, hey, Andrew, you're throwing the most in the league downfield and not completing anything. Watch this. Is this full name Andrew or is it just Drew? I don't care. Andy Locke. <laughs> Andy Lockett. <laughs> I mean, it's nuts. It's 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 a happy time in Buffalo. It's a happy time for Bills fans across the globe. Um, oh shit, we have t-shirts. Well, we'll have t-shirts when you see this. Yeah. If you want. But we'll drop also, a comment. Don't. It also, doesn't matter. Whatever. Yeah. It, we're going to sell them for cheap. We just want people to have the ability to buy cheap shirts. Yeah. That say Buffalo Bills division. Buffalo, they don't say Buffalo. Buffalo division champs on it. We just we just want I mean they're just gonna be cheap. That's the main goal. I think they'll be like fifteen dollars. Yeah, provide cheap division wear for our listeners. Yeah, I think they have hoodies for like seventy dollars from the Bills store. Yeah, listen, we're we're not trying to make money off of it. We're just trying to make sure I'm, I mean the Bills I just, out, just, I just want to get a couple of McDoubles, man. <laughs> Let me eat. <sighs> Kidding. Um player this time. Player of the game? Approaching on 20 minutes. That's fine. Long enough. I mean, of course it's Josh Allen. <laughs> Obviously. Of course He's it's He's definitely Stephon in the Diggs. MVP conversation now. Yeah. There's no doubts about it. He's in the MVP conversation. I'd say Trey White. Just because I love that play. And you could even flip side it. Jerry Hughes. Jerry Hughes had a good game. He did. Of course, he had one of his signature. Uh, well, no, that, was, that ended up being a false start. I thought it was going to be one of his signature uh, encroachments. That was a great game. I mean... It was one of the most satisfying Bills games in a long time. Most relaxed I've ever been. I don't think anyone won the football either. Next time, maybe. I burned my finger last night. On the log. Yeah. Tried to grab a log out of the fire. Who Tragic. Knew, who knew it bites back? Well. well guys, we'll talk to you Monday, right? No. No. When's Thursday? Today's Monday. Today's Sunday. Tomorrow's Monday. Tomorrow's Monday. We'll talk to you Wednesday. Nope, Thursday. Well, we'll be talking to you Wednesday. You'll hear us on Thursday. <laughs> it's a little bit of a reverb here. Yeah, the can's got to, or yeah. the string's got to reach the can. Yeah, exactly. So we'll be doing this Wednesday for your Thursday. Bills at New England. 
Monday Night Football next week. Maybe, maybe we'll wear Santa hats. Bye-bye.